Well, ChatGPT and AI are the conversation of the day, and I was really curious what would happen if I asked it to plan the perfect day for me in Paris. No context, didn't tell it I live here, that I've been here before, nothing. I just said, what would the itinerary for the perfect day in Paris be? And this is what it told me. Paris is a beautiful city with many different things to see and do, so it can be difficult to create the perfect itinerary for a single day. However, here's a possible itinerary for a great day in Paris. I was like, I'm sold. Let's do it. Morning. Start the day with a croissant and coffee at a traditional Parisian cafe, such as Café de Flore or Les Deux Magots in Saint-Germain-des-Prés. All right, let's get started. All right, I went for the Allongé, which is coffee. I have to admit up front that I have a bias against this place. I would never send anyone here because it's not a local spot. It's extremely expensive and uh, it, it's a little bit, it's just overdone. It's, it's obvious, but I will say the service is, the staff are really nice. If you saw the croissant video that I just made, you're not going to be surprised to find out that this doesn't make the list. And you'll also not be surprised that four euros and 90 cents is quite a lot for a croissant. This espresso and croissant combo, I think is going to cost me about 10 euros, maybe 11, but we did it. And I'm only lightly annoying my neighbors by filming this. Mm. Well, I still wouldn't recommend that you come here. One perk to this place is that it opens at 7.30 in the morning, which is really early for France. You may not know this, but the French don't really do breakfast and they don't really do early. Paris doesn't really start till like 9 a.m. in general. So if you are in the area and you're looking for, you know, a 10 euro espresso and croissant combination, then this might be the place for you. Cool, okay, let's see what's next on our list. Walk around the picturesque neighborhood of Montmartre. That is nowhere near here. <laughs> and visit the Basilica, the Basilique du Sacré-Cœur, for a stunning panoramic view of the city. We gotta, we gotta go all the way across town now. Okay. And as we're walking out and about, following this robot around Paris, if you'd like to take some tips from somebody who can actually physically taste and enjoy food, uh, then grab my guide at parisinmypocket.com. It'll, uh, you know, make sure that you have the best time possible in Paris, and you won't get run over by taxis. I, no guarantees on that one, actually. You, your life's in your own hands. We made it to Montmartre, and just a quick reminder, if you do go to a best, there are elevators here. Don't, don't walk up all the stairs. But I believe we've been requested to go to a uh, oh, walk through Montmartre and take in the view from Sacre Coeur. All right. Ah, and there are a lot of stairs to go all the way up here too, but ChatGPT is right. There, there, there are some really nice panoramic views from up here. Now this is a place that I do come as often as I can, not nearly enough, and I do highly recommend. For obvious reasons, it's amazing. I love it up here. I haven't been in the church in a minute. We should probably go in there. I've actually never done the top. Something I've been saving. We'll do that one of these days. Remember, fellas, hats off in the church. And uh, yeah, I haven't been in there in a minute. It's nice to go in every once in a while. Where's it sending us off to next? Uh, afternoon. Oh, we're already up to the afternoon. All right, had a schedule. Well, I'm getting hungry for lunch. Stroll along the Seine River. We that we were just we were just there. A minute ago. Okay, we just go back down and uh, enjoy the views of the Eiffel Tower and the many bridges over the river. I think we can manage that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, these are some nice bridges. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, when you think about it, this is one of the great joys of Paris is walking around and enjoying the sights, the Seine. The bridges are nice and there are a lot of them to cross if you really feel like crossing them. So yeah. Don't, don't sleep on the suggestion to walk through Paris, but I would make the recommendation that you start getting your steps in now. If you're gonna come visit the city, it's a, it's a lot of walking. I've already put in 7,500 steps and we're like only, we're not even halfway through this. So it's gonna be a full day. Now, wh where do we go? Oh, this isn't, there's more to this. You can also take a boat tour on the Seine to see the city from a different perspective. 
okay. Luckily, there's one right over there by Pont Neuf. But I am, I am getting hungry. When do they factor food into this? Robots know you need food to live, right? Oh, that doesn't look promising. They won't leave until two. All right, I just checked and verified that there, there is no, there are no more boats until uh, two o'clock, and it is just now noon, and I'm, I'm dying for lunch. I'm, I'm, I'm so hungry. Oh man! All right, let's see what uh, ChatGPT is telling us to do next. It's uh, visit the Louvre Museum and admire the art and history of the world famous museum, including the Mona Lisa and the Winged Victory of Samothrace. I think I might have had to have scheduled tickets to make this happen. I, let's see if I—I I don't even know if I can buy tickets. Can I, when is lunch? Oh, after that. Take a break and enjoy the, No, we're not doing lunch after the Louvre. I, I, I don't know if that's cheating or not. I don't know what the rules are in this, but I'm not, I'm not. We're gonna go get lunch right now. Now what it's recommending is the Relais de Comptoir or L'Amboise. And L'Amboise is way out of the price range. But Relais is like the, where we have already been. I've never actually been to the Relais. I've uh, walked by it a million times. It's one of those, I feel like iconic locations. I have a lot of recommendations for this area, but I'm excited to give this a try and see what it's like. It's attached to a hotel. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be good. They were closed, and uh, the lady who told me as much was not very nice about it. So I'm gonna try a Japanese sando across the street because I just noticed it. It looks tasty, sounds good, hopefully it's fast, and I just got my 10,000 steps in. My watch is buzzing. Bonjour. They have a Wagyu beef sandwich. Wagyu beef's one of those things that I've only had it like once or twice. It was amazing. This is light, crispy. The bread, I mean. I'm actually, I'm so hungry. I'm so glad those guys were jerks. I don't think I would have wandered over here and found this. They're gonna, they were gonna open in a bit, but they weren't nice. And I was like, ah, I'm so hungry now. I'd already done one roll around the block waiting for them to open. This worked out for the better. This is also how I found the majority of things that are in my guide just by wandering around the city and being like, that looks good, trying it. And if it was, that's how I find it and recommend it to you. So this sandwich is making me so happy right now. Oh my gosh. I was able to buy tickets to the, the Louvre. So we've got tickets at 1.30, which is in um, just over an hour, plenty of time. It'll be a little bit of a walk back there. Whew. And then we'll see how the rest of the afternoon goes. Almost, thanks on that one, ChatGPT. It's so good, it's really expensive. They have cheaper options. This is the most expensive option on the menu, just to forewarn you, but I had to try it. It was 23 bucks for this sandwich. But I'm so happy that I got it. The Louvre is one of those places that, I, I mean, I love this place, but it is so overwhelming. There's a strike, so like half the museum is closed, and there's a surprisingly small number of people uh, observing security around here. Anywho, let's see what we're up to next. Take a break and enjoy a delicious lunch. Right, already skipped this part. We're at the evening portion of our uh, chat GPT guided tour today, and it says to walk around the charming Murray neighborhood and explore its many boutiques, art galleries, and restaurants. Not, not quite done, I gotta actually go do it now. Oh. Okay, now done. Well, we're taking a break here in Place des Vosges, which is in the Marais. The Marais, the, like defining the Marais has become trickier for me because the third used to be like, the, you know, the Haute Marais, like the High Marais, and this was like the traditional Marais in that direction, but now it's confusing. You can let me know what you think the uh, Marais is in the comments below. Also, let me know how you feel about all this like AI chat GPT stuff. Curious. I'll share some thoughts at the end of this, but thanks to today's patron producer, a very real human being, I think. Katie Von Illion, thank you so much for sending me out here to try this out on this incredibly scattered, weird, but kind of understandable itinerary. Let's see what we've got left. Enjoy a romantic evening cruise on the Seine River. It was gonna send me on two boat cruises today, passing by some of the city's most iconic landmarks, like the Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame, and the Musée d'Orsay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess we're good. I don't know if I can make it romantic by myself, but I'll, 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 I'll do my darndest. Ugh. I mean, it is fairly romantic, I suppose. I also found a nice uh, little section to myself. I always forget how much talking happens on these cruises. Whenever I try to film, it never works out very well. Anyway, 
Sa construction a duré deux siècles. Okay, well, let's see what else we have to do here. Thanks to good old chat GPT. End the day with a spectacular view of Paris at night by visiting the on top of the Eiffel Tower. The tower is illuminated with golden lights every night and offers a stunning panorama of the city. That is true. I am not doing that. I'm, I'm drawing the line, I think, after, after the romantic boat cruise. I'll be here for another 40 minutes or something. I have no idea how this is going to last an hour. And, like I said, the boat cruises are worth it, but uh, it's been a very full day. The with the I feel like there are a number of things to talk about thanks to this video, for me today at least, both on the whole side of like remembering just the, the challenges of touring a city that you may not know and having limited time to see. There's so much to do in Paris. You can never do it in a week, let alone a few days. And then also the whole thing about like the ChatGPT, OpenAI, the project that's ongoing there. I've been reading some stuff about the craziness on Bing. I realize this is my bad choice to try and record this on the boat. <laughs> I, I take full responsibility for that. Let's talk, let's find a quiet space and then we can talk. I think the most obvious thing that's going on right now is wherever we are, in the process or sigmoid curve, as a lot of people have been talking about, of AI adoption, its creation, its future, things are changing. Like, I think that's kind of the biggest takeaway from a lot of what I've been seeing and reading, what I experienced when I messed around with like ChatGPT in particular. There's a lot of really interesting and cool stuff out there, but it is also a little bit unsettling in its own way. It's also a little bit exciting. It's a mixture of things. I feel a variety of emotions about it. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where this all ends up, of course, but also, yeah, a little bit apprehensive, especially when you start reading the stuff that was going on with like Bing, some of the journalists that have been dealing with things like Sydney and her obsession with married men. Weird. I'll link to that one below. I'll also put both. I actually got two itineraries for this day and I kind of, I just had to pick between both of them were a little bit obnoxious for their own reasons and both of them were a little bit off. So I'll put a link to those in the description below. I'll put them on a blog post on my website so you can read through those because I don't think there's enough space in the description on YouTube for all of it. But I think the interesting thing is that like there's really something here. There's something very powerful here. It's interesting. And even though, yes, the itinerary is all over the place, it's very shallow. It's very cliche. It feels kind of like some Somebody that watched Emily in Paris might have made this itinerary not realizing how far things were between each other or how to do it efficiently or whatever. Like we can laugh about that, we can joke about that, but the reality is that like it's not like these things aren't what people would want to do. And in that way it's kind of impressive that you could just put in there, what's the perfect day in Paris? And it would spit out actual stuff that, yeah, a lot of people would really like to do while they were here. Far too much to do in the average day of an average tourist, but still. It's impressive. If I'd gone just a little bit farther down, I could have been in the sun. It's much better. It's engaging. I think, I think one of the other things too is that like the reality is, like what I do for a living, I don't think is necessarily directly threatened, but definitely could be impacted by this because at the end of the day, like if you want to follow a real human being who's actually gone, tasted, touched, and you know, smelled, I don't know, gotten the five senses in there to enjoy experiences, food, drinks, whatever. Ultimately, there's a, obviously a human value to that. But also like these tools, when it comes to planning trips and, and going to places are gonna get better with time and they are gonna be able to help you plan your trip. And I don't think that's something that we should turn a blind eye to. It's something that we should engage with, talk about and figure out how that works with, yeah, like, like I said, what I'm doing, what so many people are doing in so many arenas of not what you could call knowledge work, whether they're programmers or writers artists of all kinds, there's like a variety of, I think, really important conversations that we should be having that hopefully start happening more and more broadly because it really feels like this is going to be the beginning of something huge. No one's ever going to replace pigeons for what they can do for us, but obviously uh, the rest of us can be easily replaced by our new robot overlords. So all that to say that like, yeah, this, it was, a, it was not a pleasant itinerary today, trying to stick to all of it. I've already put in almost 20,000 steps. Obviously the impact of AI, whatever that looks like in the future. I was just thinking on the boat ride, uh, you know, a minute ago, like it's not that AI has to become sentient. It just has to convince us that it's sentient. And it's, it's crazy how close to that I feel like we already are. So the AI discussion is one that I do believe should be had, maybe not on my channel, but overall, and among friends, family. We've been talking about it a lot here in Paris. I'm sure you're talking about it a lot wherever it is you are. I think it's fascinating, a little bit scary, but also a little bit exciting. This Today's been, in, I think it's, it's given me a lot of insight that I didn't have before, so I'm, I'm really grateful for it. I'm also really tired and I'm ready 
to go home. I still, I'm still not home. I still gotta, I still gotta make it all the way home. Oh man. I, I don't mean to rob you of your view of the Eiffel Tower. I just don't wanna go up it. It's been a long day, what can I say? But this has actually given me a really nice appreciation. It's like a, a reboot of my appreciation for the challenges of being a tourist. And it gets me excited to help because thankfully in living here, having done tourism and tourist stuff for a long time, but also having lived here and been just an, a naturalized Parisian, I guess you could say. I do know the tips and tricks for getting around faster, easier, what to look out for and what to keep it more interesting. And that's why I would recommend going and getting my guide at parismypocket.com so that you can actually, you know, avoid the cliche places that are easy enough for a chatbot to go find. Of course, updates on the guide if you're gonna buy it. Don't, don't hesitate. I think there are a lot of people that are waiting to see if there is an update. There is an update coming for 2023. It's just a little bit slow to be released right now because we're using it as a springboard in for the design stages of the uh, early version of the app. I have added like another 100 rest restaurants to it and removed about a dozen that needed to be removed as well. There have been some good updates. It is on its way. But anybody that buys my guide in 2023, even if you buy the 2022 version right now, you'll get the 2023 version for free later. Don't worry. So if you want to grab it now, please do. And then I'll send out an email to everyone who's bought it this year with a discount code or a free download. We'll figure it out. But you'll get it. You'll get the 2023 version if you buy my guide in 2023. So don't worry about it. If you're coming sooner than later, definitely get it now. And then hopefully, in the not too distant future, we'll have some updates on the app that we can share with you. And uh, that'll be really exciting. I actually, I, I can't wait for that.